Blessed morning to you, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We praise and thank God for this wonderful Sunday morning that he has given to all of us to come before him in worship. And I do hope that you uh, are ready to come before God in offering your lives to worship him. Indeed, as we come before him, let us give him all the praise, the glory, the honor, and the majesty forever. Psalm chapter 48, verses 9 to 10, and verse 14 says, Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Like your name, O God, your praise reaches to the ends of the earth. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. Indeed, there is no one like our God. He is a God who has owned everything, a God who owns even eternity. As we start, let us sing our opening hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal. Lead on, O King Eternal, the day of march has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest, thy tent shall be our home. Through days of preparation, thy grace has made us strong. And now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King Eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor roll of stirring drums, with deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. Lead on, O King Eternal, we follow not with fears, for gladness breaks like morning where'er thy face appears. Thy cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in its light. The crown awaits the conquest, lead on, O God of mine. Let us now come before the Lord in prayer. We give you thanks, dear God, for this wonderful time. We praise you, Lord, for another Sunday of worship. Indeed, the Lord, through each and every day that we go through in this life, no matter what situation we may be in, that is enough of a proof of who you are, of your existence, of your power at work within each of us. And we thank you that you are indeed the King Eternal. We thank you that not only have you made creation but also lord you have allowed us your created beings who have sinned against you to receive from your throne the grace and mercy that we don't deserve and we thank you that this was made possible possible because of your son jesus christ and it is because of the lord jesus christ and what he has done that we can come freely before your throne of grace this morning. So Lord, we want to praise you. We want to thank you for all of the things that you have done. Bless each and every part of this worship service. And indeed, Lord, work mightily within each of us through your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, 
is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen at this point we will now be reading our responsive reading taken from psalm chapter 65 Verses 1 to 13. Praise awaits you, our God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. Who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. Praise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My way. I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me
At this point, brothers and sisters, we now go to our announcements. And we thank God that, um, you know, with all of the things that uh, have happened since, you know, the, the start of this pandemic, God has been so good uh, to all of us. And this Sunday, we just want to thank and honor um, a very special group of people. Uh, and those are our frontliners. And we praise the Lord for how he has been so good in, in using them, in equipping them with what they need, in giving them the strength, the wisdom as they go through uh, each and every day, uh, serving all of us, uh, taking care of our needs, providing for us. And we just want to thank all of the frontliners. Uh, if you're a fl frontliner and you're watching this, uh, may God be praised. Uh, for your life. Also, we, we praise God for how he has used uh, our church to minister uh, to over 100 frontliners uh, for almost four months of providing uh, accommodation for them here uh, in our church. And we, we praise the Lord that indeed through this, not only have we you know, provided them this much needed accommodation, we have ministered to them in, in so many ways as well, through gifts, uh, through donations, even through the messages, the prayers that we have been giving them, at times that we're in, uh, we have, you know, uh, specifically brought them in prayer. Uh, those are really things that we just want to thank the Lord for. Okay? And also, uh, this is also a great time for us to uh, continue to trust the Lord for them. Um, Yes, we may be in our homes, and some of us may already be bored uh, with, you know, not being able to go out. But these frontliners, you know, the daily task, the daily work that, you know, they have to face uh, still does not end. Some of them are already tired. Some of them have already been, you know, missing their family so much, been unable to do the things that they need to do. And yet, uh, they continuously give their lives to uh, all of us, for all of us, for, our, for the service of, of the city. And so, brothers and sisters, um, may it be that, you know, we will continue to support our frontliners. Um, we would continue to, to minister to them, to pray for them, uh, that, you know, we would not forget to, to include them in our daily prayers uh, and even, you know, find ways where we can minister to them, show kindness um, you know, extend words of encouragement to them, uh, lift them up uh, at such a time as this. And even uh, entrust God, uh, you know, entrust them to God uh, for, you know, the, these next uh, coming weeks and even months that they continue to serve, you know, for, for whatever need that they may have. Okay. So, again, to all of our frontliners, we just want to honor and thank God and praise God for you today. Thank you for your service. Now, a very important announcement as well that we have to take note of is that uh, we have another upcoming webinar, okay, and it's titled Chosen, uh, When God Calls You uh, By Name. And Chosen uh, sheds light on one of the toughest people in Scripture. And that tough person is Mary, the mother of Jesus. So join us uh, starting tomorrow, okay, July 27 to 31, uh, from 4 to 5.30 p.m. And let's walk through uh, the life of Mary together. Registration fee for this is only 150 pesos, okay? So please uh, pre-register today through the link in our caption. Okay. Another thing that uh, we would like to emphasize is our uh, School of Discipleship classes. Our classes are free and open to anyone who wants to join them through Zoom or through Facebook Live. Okay. So every Tuesday, 4 p.m., we have the Soteriology class. Um, Every Thursday, 4 p.m., we have Witnessing to Other Religions. Saturdays, 3 p.m., 
we have church history. Fridays, 6 p.m., we have our 30-minute theology, which will focus on the doctrine of God. Okay? Also, another announcement is that uh, we would like to know if who here is fond of listening to podcasts. Okay? Uh, we now have our official podcast okay, of the church okay, on Spotify. Uh, the links are also... Uh, in the caption, so you might want to, you know, subscribe to that so that you can, uh, you know, be uh, updated, be notified immediately if ever a new podcast has been posted, okay? Brothers and sisters, our 555 prayer uh, every day continues. Uh, we pray together for five, uh, you know, important persons who are affected uh, in this pandemic, Please do follow our Facebook page uh, to get alerts. Also, another thing is that our online giving, uh, you know, continues. You can give your uh, tithes and offerings through our bank accounts or via our remittance centers. Uh, no, the details of this are on your screen right now. And, of course, brothers and sisters, since we're still in our homes, we would want you know, to make sure that you get updated through our social media accounts, uh, either through Facebook or through uh, YouTube as well. So praise the Lord for uh, this, this wonderful time wherein, you know, we can still continue in, in serving Him and giving our lives to Him, even becoming a blessing to others as well. So at this point, Brothers and sisters, as we continue, let's come before God in prayer. Let us indeed entrust to Him um, all of our cares and all of our worries. And even since this is a Sunday that is so special in you know, thanking and honoring our frontliners, let's also include them in prayers. Shall we bow our heads and come before God in prayer? We want to give you thanks, dear Lord, for this wonderful time that you have given to us, this beautiful Sunday morning, and we thank you for who you are. We thank you that indeed you are good. You are a God who continues to show to us that even in, in a situation where it's hard for us to be with each other physically, and yet, Lord, you have allowed us to meet and to be with each other, to be together in worship. Thank you, Lord, for, for all of the online uh, ministry, services, worship, Bible studies, and prayer that we can do. And thank you, dear God, that uh, this is also an opportunity for us to, to expand all the more the things that we are doing, to reach out to more people uh, whom we know who would really need, uh, you know, the encouragement, the truth from your word, and would need to have a personal relationship with you in, in a time such as this. And Lord, we thank you that uh, we can also entrust to you each and everyone's needs, dear Lord. Uh, some of us may uh, be in need not only of, of something that is uh, of financial or material concern, but also, Lord, some of us may be in need of, of emotional uh, care as well. And even, Lord, spiritual care. And Father, may it be that you would indeed allow us to see that with you nothing is impossible. So dear God, help us to be sensitive of, of what other people around us are, are going through are feeling during this time. Lord, may it be that with each and every heart, with each and every person that's filled with the love of Christ, with the truth of the gospel, may it be, dear God, that you would use that person to minister to others. Those, Lord, who at this time uh, need the love and care, the concern, to be shown to them, those who need the assurance, Lord, of, of 
eternal life after their death, life with you, Lord. Father, use us. Use, Lord, the, the text messages, the calls, the group chats, even, Lord, whatever meetings that we may have online or the social media posts that we need to use. Use those, Lord, so that we can faithfully minister to people who are in need. And dear God, we just want to we just want to entrust Lord all of these efforts. We know dear Lord that with you nothing is impossible even Lord with with such a way, such a method Lord of reaching out to others. And Father, we thank you as well that we can entrust to you our friends, our families. Lord, we just know that you are with them right now. We ask that you would continue to, to spare them, Lord, from, from this virus. And Father, if they have been uh, infected by it, Lord, we ask for your healing upon them. Lord, there are a lot of, of our uh, members as well who have been infected by this virus. Some are very serious, Lord, in a very critical condition right now. Father, we entrust their lives to you. We know, dear God, that you hold their lives in, their, in your hands and that, Lord, uh, you, you can do great and mighty things. Lord, we just want to also thank you, Lord, for, for the lives of our frontliners. Thank you for how you have used them mightily for your glory. And thank you for their commitment as well. We know, dear God, that this is not just work for them. This is something that comes out from their own uh, hearts, Lord, to show care and compassion to those who are in need. And so, Father, we ask that you would indeed continue to allow uh, the compassion, the care, Lord, to grow in their hearts so that they would continue to serve. No matter how hard and how tough things would you know, become, and even, Lord, how challenging it would be for, for them to, even for them to, to go to work every day, for them to, to find a place to stay, or even, Lord, to be with their families. Father, we pray. We pray, dear God, that you would continue to let them know that you are there for them and that you will never leave them. You will never forsake them. May they find joy peace through each and every day, Lord, that they wake up to. And they, may they find, Lord, the purpose of, of the work, of the calling that you have given to each and every one of them. We thank you, dear God, for, for their lives. Father, we pray, even as we study your word, that you would prepare our hearts and minds to receive it to wholeheartedly accept the truth from your word and be encouraged by it, to trust in all of your promises. And may your Holy Spirit indeed work mightily within each of us to obey whatever it is that you have commanded us to do. We give you praise and we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let us sing our hymn of preparation, More Like the Master.
Happy Sunday, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We now come to the reading of God's Word. And so if you have your Bibles with you, why don't you please open it to the Gospel of Mark. Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 40 to 44. And in honor of God's Word, may I request you to please stand for the reading of God's Holy Word. Beginning at verse 40. A leper came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for you, for your cleansing, as a testimony to them. May God bless the reading from his holy word. Please be seated. A happy Sunday once again, brothers and sisters in the Lord. And welcome to our online worship service here in Bradford Church. We continue with our series entitled, The New Normal. The New Normal. We say this is the new normal because COVID-19 literally changed our lives. Yes, not just locally, but globally. Life, as we know of today, is different. We are now operating in what we call as the new normal. We have to go around, we have to wear our mask, we have to do social distancing. So the way we buy things, the way we go through our uh, normal daily routine has been changed. We have to wash our hands as frequent as possible. We do not know the enemy. We cannot see the enemy. And so we have to protect ourselves and those that we love. Now, part of the new normal is that we now have what we call work from home. It's like everything now revolves around the house, from our working to our uh, doing our ministries, Bible studies, even our worship services. So today, the house has become the church, the house has become the workplace, the house has become the place where we can have fun and games. So we are locked at home. And one of the things or words that became popular in this COVID-19 pandemic is the word frontliner. And that is our lesson today frontliners. Who are frontliners? Who are these people? Now, as we know, popularly, the, the doctors, the nurses, right? Those who are working in the hospital, we call them the frontliners. They are the foremost people in the fight against COVID. But not only are the doctors and nurses and, and medical professionals are called frontliners, there are other people who are also called frontliners, those who continue to serve us during this pandemic so that our essential needs can be served, like the people who serve us in gasoline station, these are frontliners, the sales ladies and cashiers in in grocery stores, they are also frontliners. Those that deliver our goods, grab drivers, and, and those that provide uh, services so that we can have our food and items delivered to us, these are also frontliners. Those people working in the bank and in, in money remittances, they, they are also called frontliners. The, the military, the policemen, as well as uh, delivery truck drivers and local barangay you know, officials. These are all frontliners. So again, 
We call them our modern day heroes. So frontliners are those people who continue basic services to satisfy the essential needs of those affected by the lockdown. We call them frontliners because they are stepping out of the comfort of their families. They risk their lives just to offer basic services to people in need. And so today, we are truly honoring them. We are truly saluting them because while we are locked at home, we have these people who are working 24 hours so that basic needs can be served. And so we pray for them and we thank the Lord for them. And this particular Sunday, we honor them in this worship service. But talking about frontliners, do you know who is the greatest frontliner? Before all this frontliners that we have today, did you know that in the Bible, we have the best example of a frontliner? And this frontliner is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Everything that fits the description of a frontliner, someone who serves others, someone who is willing to let go of his own personal comfort in order to serve others. That's what it means to be a frontliner. And that's who Jesus Christ is. According to John 10, 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. If there's one person in the Bible that qualifies what it means to be a frontliner, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who sacrificed his own comfort who sacrificed his own life to save others. And friends, that's the very essence of a frontliner is. What a frontliner is. A frontliner is someone who go the extra mile. Someone who is willing to lay aside his own comfort and the comfort of families just to work just to continue serving so that others may live. And that is what our Lord Jesus Christ did. He is the master frontliner. He is the first frontliner. He's always in the forefront when it comes to serving, when it comes to saving lives. Now, our lesson this, this particular Sunday is taken from the Gospel of Mark. If you could please open your uh, Bibles now to the Gospel of Mark. Now, why I chose the Gospel of Mark, even though our story today can be found in the three other synoptic Gospels, it can be found in Matthew, in, 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 in Luke, and in Mark. Now, Mark portrays Jesus Christ as the perfect servant, you know? You know, the humble servant, the hardworking servant. Did you know that every gospel has a specific portrayal of our Lord Jesus Christ? Like, for example, the gospel of, of Matthew portrays Jesus as the Messiah. Okay? When you, when you read the gospel of Matthew, you find there that the writer of the gospel is portraying Christ as the promised Messiah to his people, the chosen one. While the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is portrayed as the perfect man. That is why in the Gospel of Luke, you find there, you know, the birth, the human birth, the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Luke wants to prove to his audience that Jesus is the perfect man, who be is God who became man. In the Gospel of John, John portrays Jesus as the Son of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So John portrays Jesus as the second person of the Trinity who became flesh. But the Gospel of Mark is different 
because here Jesus is portrayed as the servant. No wonder as you read the first chapter of Mark, you don't find the nativity scene. Immediately, Mark brings us to Jesus in action. In the Gospel of Mark, you will also find the most miracles of Jesus Christ recorded. And the key word in, in the Gospel of Mark is the word immediately. Immediately. You find there that Jesus Christ is doing work and He's healing people because here He is portrayed as the servant. No wonder in the Gospel of Mark, you will always find Jesus Christ in the crowd. Jesus Christ is always surrounded by the sick, those who need help, because He is the suffering servant who is willing to help. Now, here we find Jesus Christ in our, in our passage today. Jesus Christ is healing a leper. Now, we find here what it means to be a frontliner. So, this morning, brethren, I want us, or this afternoon, I want us to understand what it means to be a frontliner. What are the characteristics? Okay, what does it take to be a frontliner just, our, just like our Lord Jesus Christ? How can I be a frontliner like Jesus, if Jesus is the greatest frontliner who ever served, we are followers of Jesus. Amen. You and I, when when we profess that we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we are His disciples and we are His followers, and and we are supposed to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ in our life. So, how can I be a frontliner like Jesus? Okay, one principle. Be willing. Be willing. It's willingness. That is what Mark emphasized in verse 41. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing. Friends, if you and I, even though we are not doctors, we are not bank tellers, we don't work in the government, we are not policemen, but you and I, can become a frontliner for Jesus. How? When we are willing. Willing to serve others because that is the life of Jesus. Jesus Christ came here to seek and to save the lost. Jesus lived for others. So how can I be, how can I be a frontliner like Jesus? So let me teach you three principles this morning. All right, are you ready? Do you have your sermon note? What does it take to be a frontliner like our Lord Jesus Christ? Now, here's the first lesson. Number one, be willing to listen to the cry of the needy or be willing to listen to the needy's cry. The needy's cry. Be willing. As a frontliner, we have to be quick in listening to the needs of people. That's the basic work of a frontliner. I want you to imagine a scenario in, you know, in the hospital or in an emergency room. The sick are brought there, and the first thing that frontliners do, they have to listen. That's why they have to ask questions. They have to listen, right? And the first step in in, in going to an emergency, we call that the triage. Okay, is that triage? That's where the, the frontliner, the nurse or the doctor would need to listen what, what the patient is feeling. Okay, now that's very important. And that is what we find here in our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 40. A leper came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Friends, we find here that Jesus Christ listened to the leper's cry. Now, you have to 
imagine the situation. Jesus Christ is so busy. Every day, he would be going from town to town, from city to city, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And people would be following him, would be tailing him. He will be swarmed with people. But notice this. Amidst all the busyness of our Lord's schedule, he would always find time to listen to people's cry. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus, brethren. Be willing to listen. Do you know what's going on? And here, the leper came to Jesus Christ, and as the master frontliner, we find that Jesus did not discriminate the man. Jesus did not discriminate the man. Now, remember in Leviticus 13, people with leprosy or people with infectious disease, they are supposed to be isolated, quarantined. And that quarantine, that restriction became discrimination during the time of Jesus. People with infectious disease like leprosy and the other disease mentioned in the Bible, bleeding, they were shunned, they were, they were banished from society. People discriminated them. People don't want to go near them. In fact, they were, they were banned from entering the society. They were to live outside the community, right? But despite that social normal, Jesus Christ did not discriminate the man. He took time to stop and listen to the cry of the man. Not only that, Jesus did not deny his need. Jesus Christ stopped, listened, and asked, what do you need? The Bible tells us in verse 41 that filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man, and he said, I am willing. So Jesus Christ did not deny the man's need, and that's what it means to be a frontliner. You should not. We should not discriminate people. Sometimes we discriminate with how people look. But that is not our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, God looks at the heart. Man looks at only the outward appearance. As followers of Jesus, brethren, we need to be able to listen to the cry of people. What are they crying about? What are their problems? What are their needs? And third, Jesus put himself in danger when he touched the man. Why? Again, because during the time of Christ, people were not allowed, people were prohibited to go near and even touch people with leprosy. But here we find Jesus Christ did not discri discriminate the man did not deny his need, and even Christ put himself in danger. In danger of what? In danger of physical infection or in danger of social, social discrimination as well. Because people would be discriminating Christ for associating himself with the leper. But Jesus Christ did not think of those things. For that moment, Jesus Christ was focused on the cry of the man. Not so much on what other people would say because that's what it means to be a frontliner. Our focus is the person in need. And that was the focus of our Lord Jesus Christ. The focus of Christ was the need of that person. The person was crying. The, the leper needs something and Jesus Christ, the master frontliner, stopped and he listened, and he did something for the man. In other words, friends, Jesus Christ was living out a selfless life. Friends, self-centeredness is the greatest hindrance to loving our neighbors. It's so hard to love our neighbors, to love others, when we love ourselves so much. But Jesus Christ exemplified to us what agape love is. Agape love is what? Loving others. Agape love is sacrificial, selfless love. 
And that's the first principle of what it means to be a frontliner of Christ. We have to get away from ourselves, the focus, and listening, being able to listen to the cry, to the needs of others. That's the first principle. Now we go to the second lesson. To be a frontliner like our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to be willing to lend a hand to the neediest condition. We need to lend a hand to the neediest condition. Notice verse 41. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Now here we find a very classic miracle of Christ. Okay? You know, Jesus could have just said the word. You know, Jesus is powerful, right? Jesus could just simply say, be healed. But he did not do that. You know what Jesus did? Probably he, he went down, he knelt towards the man, and he touched the man. You find here, friends, the lending hand of our Lord. Right? Lending a hand to the neediest condition. That man was never, you know, since the man got that leprosy, he has never been touched by anyone, by his family, by his loved ones. But now, for the first time, here's a stranger who is willing to stoop down to his level and touch him, lending him a hand, going down to his condition. That's what our Lord Jesus Christ did. Friends, he did something radical. He did something what we call a new normal. It was not normal. In fact, it was forbidden to touch lepers. But Jesus Christ did something out of the ordinary. He touched the man. You know? And I believe that when Jesus did this, it, it, it was with emphasis and it was with a purpose. He wanted to show that, you know, that's the character of our God. That's the compassion of our God. God did not just remain in heaven looking towards man and our needs, you know, and say, you know, be well. I hope everything is provided. No? You know what God did? God stooped down. God came down, you know, the Word became flesh, and the Bible says, and dwelt among us. That's what Jesus Christ ex exemplified here. God connecting with man. You have here, you know, something amazing. The holy touching the un unholy. All right? The perfect, the perfect touching the imperfect. The holy Touching the defiled, the divine touching the defiled. That's amazing, brethren. There, Jesus Christ is showing what it means to be a Christian frontliner, being willing to lend a hand. And you know what happened, brethren? Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Now, let us. Look closely at the condition of the man. You see, we need to understand how radical was the act of our Lord Jesus Christ here. The man's condition, first, he was defiled. Remember leprosy? In Leviticus chapter 13, people with leprosy are banned from society. You know, they are quarantined. They are supposed to, to abandon their families and their community for health purposes all right it, this is for health purposes remember remember in our first uh part of the series when we were talking about social distancing god commanded moses whenever they find someone with some infectious disease the first thing they must do is to isolate to remove that person from the community and 
that is so accurate, that is so medically accurate. Why? So that that person will not infect others. And that is why they are isolated. But by the time, by the time it came to the, the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, people were already abusing that restriction. People with leprosy were now considered cursed. Although it was not part of the Levitical law, but during the time of Christ, the Jews thought that when you have infectious disease, you are cursed. That's why people should not touch you because you are a defiled person. And if we touch you, we can also be defiled. So the person was defiled physically and for Jewish beliefs spiritually. But then socially as well, he was discriminated. Imagine this man isolated from his loved one and family. For a long time, he could not see and touch his family. And whenever people see them, people see them with what? With disgrace, with disgust. And so they are discriminated. And, and this causes the man what? To be so desperate. And that is why when this man saw Jesus, he was so desperate. He was crying. He was shouting. Lord, if you, if you are willing, make me clean. Probably this leper heard that this man, Jesus, has been curing. He's been, you know, doing miracles. And a lot of people have been cured. And now when this man heard, when this leper heard that Jesus Christ is in town, with all his strength and with all his might, he just wanted to be close to our Lord. He wanted to draw near to the Lord. And when he had the chance, he shouted. He cried, Lord, please make me clean. So the man knew that he was defiled. The man knew that he was so desperate. And now he had this chance of meeting the Savior, the miracle worker, the great healer. He is crying out. That's the condition of the man. He's, he was defiled. He was discriminated. He was desperate. And you know what Jesus did? Again, Jesus did something that was not applicable or acceptable at their time. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. He reached out his hand and touched the man. Okay, that's what's amazing. Okay? You don't touch lepers at the time. The law forbids. But Jesus Christ did. All right? Jesus Christ did. Not in the sense that Jesus Christ destroyed the law, but Jesus Christ touched the man because he was illustrating something here. That unless God touches our lives, we will never be clean. Unless we are touched by our Lord, by the healing touch of our Lord, we will never be clean. Friends, that leper never experienced this touch before. And he has experienced this amazing touch of our Lord, and he got healed. Amen? Now, let us try to understand and see the touch of our Lord, okay? The first thing we find is this. The touch of our Lord Jesus Christ was a compassionate touch. It was a compassionate touch. Look at verse 41. Filled with compassion. Okay? Filled with compassion. This means that when Jesus saw the condition of this man, he was really moved to his God. Again, in the Greek, the word compassion literally means splunk, splunknizumai. You know what? That Greek word, splunknizumai, it means the gut, the intestines. For the Jews, it is the, the innermost part of a man. For us today, we say, I love you with all my heart. But for the Jews, they have a different way of saying it. I love you with all my guts. So here, Jesus Christ was so moved. He really was sympathetic to this man's despair. He felt the agony of this man's disease. 
he felt the separation that this man experienced. And so Jesus was moved with compassion. That's what it means to be a frontliner for Jesus, brethren. Are you moved with all your guts to see the needs of people around you? Filled with compassion. This is the heart of God, brethren. This is the very heart of God. The, the heart of God who feels the pain of the suffering world. That's what motivated our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the same compassion that causes Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to become man. That's the very reason why God became flesh to touch us. Why? Because we are desperately in need of a Savior. We are having this disease called sin. And the compassion of God moved him to stoop down and heal us. Brethren, Jesus did more than just doing a profession. There was a personal touch. So this for Jesus, this is not just work. This is not just profession. For Jesus, this is personal. So that touch was a personal touch. It was not just a touch because he was a healer, but it was the touch of God. Amen? Have you been touched by God lately? Have you experienced the miraculous touch of God? Friends, that's what our world needs today. Our world today needs the touch of Jesus. And you and I know where to find Jesus. The second thing we find about the touch of our Lord, it was a courageous touch. Jesus' touch. The touch of Jesus was courageous. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. Why was it so courageous? Because it was something uncommon. It was something prohibited by their society at that time. So Jesus started the new normal. It was not normal for clean people to touch unclean. But Jesus Christ could never be infected. Jesus Christ can never be defiled. In fact, it's the reverse. When, when the defiled is touched by the divine, the defiled becomes divine. Jesus Christ's touch was courageous. It was so radical when he touched the man, I'm sure, I'm sure it, it alarmed people around him. It amazed them. You know? It bewildered them. You know? It was something out of the ordinary. This famous rabbi from, from Nazareth is touching a defiled. And remember, that's what the, the, the Pharisees were always, you know, they were always criticizing Christ. You call yourself a rabbi and you are always with what? With the tax collectors, with the sinners. And you know what Jesus said? It's the sick that needs the doctor, not the healthy. And friends, this sick man is touched by the greatest doctor. Amen? For the first time, he has been touched by a clean man. The touch of our Lord Jesus Christ was courageous, brethren. And third, the touch of our Lord Jesus Christ was cleansing, cleansing and curing. His touch was cleansing and curing. Look at this. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. That's the command of our Lord. Friends, Jesus is the same God who commanded storms and waves to cease. Now he is commanding this bacteria, be clean. He is commanding the bacteria, be clean. And you know what? Verse 42, immediately, remember? Immediately, that's one of the key words in the Gospel of Mark, giving us here a very fast-paced work of the servant. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cured. Friends, this is amazing. 
That leprosy made the man defiled. That leprosy made the man desperate. That leprosy denied the man of, of fellowship with his family. But when Jesus touched him, even that bacteria left him. Amazing. Jesus is our great healer. Amen? Let Jesus touch you today, whatever you are feeling, whether it's COVID, it's cancer, it's, it's cough, fever, whatever you are feeling right now, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be healed. Amen? Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cured. Friends, today... Do you know the illness that separates us from God? Do you know what this illness is called? It is not COVID. It is not HIV. Do you know what this illness that all humanity has? It's called sin. Sin. And the Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 2, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. Sin separates us from God. Sin defiles us. Sin makes us unclean. And sin will lead us to death. But here's the good news, brethren. Sin is the greatest disease. Jesus is the greatest doctor. And the blood of Jesus is the greatest medicine. Amen? 1 John 1, 7, the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us. I want you to say that word, purifies us from all sin. There is no sin that God is not willing to touch and to cleanse. Amen? There is no sin that God is not willing to forgive. That is why immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. And friends, when the Bible says he was cured, it's not that the leprosy left him, the bacteria left him, but then no more hands. No. When the Bible says cured, the word there for cured, it means restored, meaning to say there is a recreative power of Jesus. You know? That's the, that's the essence of the word cured. It means that fingers started to grow back. See? That's the meaning of the word. That's the implication. When the Bible says, when the leprosy left him, it means the bacteria left him, but then Mark says, and he was cured, meaning to say there was restorative power working so that fingers that were gone because of the leprosy were back. Friends, that's the amazing power of Jesus Christ. He can recreate what was lost by sin. What are some of the things that you have lost because of your sin, brethren? When you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and your healer, He will not only forgive you, He will not only cleanse you, but He will restore blessings to you. Amen? So, what, what does it take to be a frontliner like Jesus? Listen to the needest cry. Lend a hand to the needest condition. And here's a third principle we find in the next verse. Let go of the need for commendation. Let go of the need for commendation. Look at verse 43 and 44. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. Okay? I want you to emphasize to look at this, with a strong warning. What is that warning? Jesus said, See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Take note, as a testimony to them. All right? 
Now, this has puzzled a lot of people. Why Jesus had a very strong warning not to tell everyone? Of course, uh, if you read the next verses, Mark gives us the reason there why Jesus Christ forbid this man. And you might be asking, isn't that the whole point that people need to know about Jesus? But the point there is that because the man was telling others about this, the Bible says Jesus could no longer enter the town peacefully because, you know, the ministry of the gospel was hindered by what? By the physical needs of people. And so people were focusing on the physical, the physical, not anymore with the spiritual. Remember, the, the priority of Christ is to preach the gospel of the kingdom. The miracles were only what? Testimonies of the gospel. All right, but let us draw some important principles here. Okay, Jesus said, do not tell anyone. Okay, what principle can be learned here? Here's the first principle. Jesus did not self-promote. Jesus did not self-promote. In other words, when Jesus Christ was doing this service, this work, it was not for self-promotion. It was not to, you know, to boast. See? He had all the reason to boast, remember? Even though he was God. But he did not claim it, something for him to grasp. That's what Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6 tell us. Okay? Jesus did not self-promote. Christ always said that in the Gospel of John. I am not here to glorify myself, but to glorify the Father. It is the Father that glorifies me. So friends, as a frontliner, let us not self-promote. Let us not promote ourselves. That's what Jesus said. See that you don't tell this to anyone. According to Proverbs 27 verse 2, let someone else praise you and not your own mouth. An outsider and not your own mouth lips okay that's that's an additional principle from from this passage matthew 23 12 jesus said for those who exalt themselves will be what will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted so when we do services for others brethren follow the example of jesus do not promote yourself okay jesus did not self-promote. Secondly, Jesus served in secrecy. Okay? Whenever Jesus Christ was healing, it was not to make himself popular. That's why many times in the Gospels, you find that when people started to swarm Jesus, Jesus would immediately, what? In secret, he would simply vanish before them. Okay? Publicity is not part of the ministry of Christ. He, he wasn't here just to be popular. That's why Jesus says, see that you don't tell this to anyone. And Jesus teach, taught us a, a principle about this in, in Matthew 6, 3. But when you give or when you serve, when you serve or when we, you give to the needy, what did Jesus say? Do not let your left hand know what your height, right hand is doing so that your giving or your serving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. In other words, when you serve and when you give, do it in secret because the Father rewards people who serve in secret. Amen? And then third principle we find in verse 43 and 44, Jesus obeyed the scriptures. See, Jesus obeyed the scripture. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing. Take note, as a testimony to them. So Jesus Christ had this strong warning before you tell others about this, you obey the scripture because the law says that if you are cured, it is the priest that will verify the veracity of your healing. 
It is the priest that will give you the certificate that you are healed. And so Jesus says, follow, follow the law. Jesus Christ obeyed the, the scripture. And friends, we notice that if you read the next verse, verse 45, the leper did not follow the command of Jesus. Instead, he went out telling people about his cleansing. And instead of doing good, it became a hindrance because Mark says because of that, Jesus could no longer enter a town peacefully because people, people are just going for what? For the, the physical food, not the spiritual. And so this was a bad testimony. Supposedly, if, if the leper went to the priest, then the, that would be what? A testimony to them. Who healed you? Then it points them to Jesus. I'd like to quote here John MacArthur. John MacArthur said, A disobedient life in the midst of a testimony is meaningless. The testimony is rendered invalid. So be obedient and in the midst of your obedience, God will manifest out of that the transforming power of Christ. So be obedient. The first thing that we should do when we are healed, when we are cleansed by our Lord, by the Lord's touch, is to obey Him. Amen? That is the, the number one step to living a glorious life for Jesus, a God-honoring life. Be obedient. Amen? Now, let's close this message. Now, having heard the three principles, number one, let us listen. So, what does it mean to be a frontliner for Jesus? Listen to the needless cry. Lend a hand to the needless condition. And let go, let go of the need for Commendation. Don't look for the praise of man. Aim for the praise of God above. Amen? Now, as I close, Jesus often said these words, which is more difficult, to heal disease or forgive sin? Which is more difficult, according to Jesus, to heal disease or forgive sins? But Jesus Christ did both. He came to heal the sick, but much more than that, he came to forgive sinners. And so we find this, brethren, through his miracles, Jesus was not only revealing his power over disease, but his power over sin and death. Those miracles are simply illustrations that this Jesus who came is not just a great healer, he is the Savior. So through his miracles, Jesus was not only demonstrating that he was a healer, but that he is the Savior of sinners. Jesus came not just to heal, but to save. For that is what frontliners do. They work to save lives. Amen? That's what frontliners do. That's why frontliners serve so that others may be saved. Now, let me leave this for you to reflect on this week. As a frontliner of Jesus Christ, brethren, whose life are you going to save this week? Jesus already saved you and me. Now we are frontliners. Whose life we are going to save? Amen and amen. At this time, we will now go to our call to offering. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11 says, You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through, through this will result in thanksgiving to God. Now is the time for us to bring our tithes, pledges, and love offerings to the Lord. 
Hello, thank you Bradford family for the love and care. God bless you all. Thank you Bradford family and God bless. Tanan, uh, ako dahil si Kenneth Larisan. Uh, una sa tanan, magpasalamat ko sa ginoo nga uh, iyang gihatag ka namo ang Bradford family nga uh, mutabang ka namo ang mga frontliners nga na nay mutang sa COVID ambulance o sa COVID ward. Dako kay na kong pasalamat sa Bradford family sa inyong tabang sa panahon nga pandemya nga inyong mangihatagan o kapuyan or kaistihan o wala pa ang Bradford family magulian gihapon ko sa amo unya dili man pwede kay tungod aning pandemic naasad ko ipamilya wa mahadlo ko nga ako yung may mong karyer nila then pasalamat ay ko ni Pastor Jim nga walay puasa sa pag tabang ka na mo o sa pag prayer meeting. Salamat kayo ninyo Bradford family. Thank you Bradford family for the love. God bless. Bradford family, thank you sa inyong sa hospitality and love. God bless you. And also to Pastor Jim. You're a good man. Thank you. Thank you. Hello Bradford family. Sending you a warm thank you and for your hospitality. Hi Bradford, thank you for letting us stay in your school and making it our second home. To uh, thank you for your effort to fight with this pandemic, letting us stay here. Truly appreciated it, and God bless you all. Thank you, thank you for all your support. for this offering let's bow our heads we thank you Lord and we praise you for this opportunity of allowing us to give back to you what we know uh, is only a portion of what you have given to us and thank you dear God that with this uh, percentage Lord of, of what has been entrusted to us it can be used for the furtherance of the gospel and also for the growth of your kingdom. Indeed, Lord, continue to give us the wisdom to use these for your glory alone. And may you be glorified with the hearts that have been generous in giving back to you. We give you praise and we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we close, let us sing the hymn, Make Me a Blessing.
give as was given. Give as was given to you and your name. close in prayer let us pray father in heaven we thank you lord for this sunday we thank you father for this day that we honor the frontliners those men and women who are working outside their comfort zones even devoid of of the fellowship from their families so that others can live and survive father bless them i pray that you would Continue, Lord, to add more blessings and protection to all the frontliners out there risking their health and their lives, O oh God. We pray that you will provide their needs. And for all of us believers, we are all frontliners for Jesus. Help us, Lord, to apply the principles that we have heard today. Help us, Lord, to be able to listen to the cry of others to their needs, O oh God. Help us to lend a hand to the condition of our neighbors. And above all, Lord, help us to let go of the need for commendation, the need for praise. Lord, it is your praise that is so necessary. And so help us, Lord, to serve with secrecy, to serve with all compassion. Father in heaven, I entrust to you our brothers and sisters who are praying right now, they have their personal needs, Lord, whether it's healing, it's for provision, it's for some problems in their lives, in their families. I pray, O oh God, that you will answer all their needs according to the riches of your grace that is found in Christ Jesus. And now may the love of the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us in our online worship today. See you next Sunday. God bless you.